Welcome, my name is Lex, and as you know from my introduction yesterday, I run DataSpects that provides uh, corporate federated semantic search using MediaWiki as one of its pivotal component. Find and Learn is a new brand I chose uh, that I think conveys uh, what this is all about, and I'd like to explain to you in a little story what I mean. So let's meet Annie. Annie is a female employee, and her name sounds the same as N-E, so she's a new employee. The challenge with new employees is that you have to onboard them, and they have to find and learn stuff in order to be, become productive. On the other side, you've got Ellie. Ellie is L-E, a leaving employee. Here for the company, the challenge is to make sure that you safeguard Ellie's information and knowledge before she leaves the company. Otherwise, you end up uh, with cases that we all know about. So the challenge is actually the knowledge transfer from Ellie to Annie. The main goal, therefore, is to optimize the knowledge quality that you hold uh, within your company. And there are three main aspects here. First of all, when we do onboarding, and I think we all experience that many times, normally your colleagues put you in front of a flip chart and start to draw boxes and connect them with lines, explaining to you this is connected to this and that way, and if that happened, you have to make sure that you understand this and so on. So literally, we have a knowledge graph uh, that is drawn. Secondly, uh, you've got entity types and how they are linked. Now, this directly um, relates to EPO, this is the every page is page one uh, paradigm that we heard here many times. Uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by that in the, uh, afterwards. And then, and this is where MediaWiki now uh, first turns up, uh, we want a epoizing ontology. That means implementing epo on a semantic MediaWiki for several reasons. Now we're going to get to that in a moment. Now let's go through a couple of thoughts regarding find and learn and externalize and integrate. Uh, are you familiar with the concept of unconscious and conscious uh, competence and uh, incompetence? Imagine if we start with UI, you are a baby. You don't know that you cannot drive. Uh, you grow up, you spend a lot of time on the back seat of your mother's or father's car, uh, and you start to understand that you cannot drive. So you actually move from an unconscious incompetence, you didn't know that you couldn't drive, to a conscious incompetence. Now you, you, know, you know that you cannot drive. Then at the age of 18 or 16, you're going to cross into CC, which is conscious competence. You start how to learn to drive but it requires an enormous amount of attention. You know, you've got many concepts. You've got the steering wheel, stick shift, clutch, brake, uh, gas pedal. You have to consider braking distance and so on, centrifugal forces, whatever. Then after a couple of months or years of driving, you move into unconscious competence. That means now you're able to drive without paying attention. And we all know that, you know, if you ask me to drive you to San Francisco today, I could hold that talk while driving, we would get there, and we wouldn't probably maybe not uh, have noticed the airship that crossed across uh, the highway because we were so, you know, deepened into our talks, and I can drive a car without paying attention. Now, if we compare the upper two, and of course we want competence, right? Annie and Ellie require competence. Uh, unconscious competence is what I um, relate to RAM. That's something that is so, that you internalize so much you don't have to think about. However, that is a very costly process with people. And we know that because we have to, have to study two, three years to fly an airplane. So a lot of our knowledge will end up in conscious competence. So that's the cloud, a media wiki, or what I call referential knowledge. So actually, uh, Annie and Ellie, they have to learn to combine concepts and probably put them somewhere. We're going to come uh, in a moment why MediaWiki is ideal for that. Uh, put those concepts somewhere for lookup and maybe some things internalize to the extent that they can practice and execute that knowledge without looking it up. Then, you know uh, this Nonaka knowledge management, uh, knowledge transfer model. You've got implicit and explicit knowledge that has to be transferred into explicit or implicit. 
uh, up to the upper, F, uh, uh, upper right, we have socialization. That's, for example, when you learn how to ski. You cannot read a book and then ski, and you cannot write a book about skiing. You need a skiing instructor that shows it to you. That's socialization. Uh, then if you turn implicit knowledge into explicit, that's externalization, writing a media wiki article. If you, confer, uh, if you convert explicit to explicit, it's combination, actually integrating knowledge. And then, of course, if you read the article, uh, you execute and learn. So that's internalization. Uh, we all know that at the beginning of our onboarding process, we have to look up many things two weeks into the job you know, 50% are so internalized that you actually don't have to uh, do that. So the question is, where do we put this explicit information? And that's where the resource silos come in. Uh, of course, we don't want to just dump the information, but we'd like to follow the EPO approach. EPO uh, envisages four basic levels of where and how you formulate knowledge. One is orient and plan. So before you actually execute steps, you have to understand where you are with your task and how you should get forward. Then understand and relate. So you understand what you're reading and you relate it to other things. Then you've got workflows and procedures. So you will know how to execute which steps in what order. And then of course you've got tasks and concrete steps. This is a term that uh, was brought up four years ago by uh, James Montalvo, who said the great advantage of MediaWiki is you can dump and organize later. And that is one very important thing, because if you slow the process of externalization by making sure that the optimized structure is in place at the first uh, moment, that will sort of re uh, render the system cumbersome. So that is a main model. And then, of course, and that's where the federated semantic search comes in. Um, semantic Media Wiki is one type of these resource silos. I am of the strong conviction that some information has a natural habitat. That's why you don't have Media Wiki uh, running the accounting for General Electric, for example. Okay, that's exact data. They're specialized in um, application for that. So, Semantic Media Wiki is one of the resource silos. Then, for example, you've got CRM, files, emails, whatever. And the search engine should actually link up all of these. Now, Semantic Media Wiki is my preferred choice as the pivotal part for three reasons. First of all, it's a general knowledge repository. That means if there is no natural habitat, we choose Media Wiki as the habitat. Second, um, I'm just going to give you an example here. If I give you three objects, a nail, a hammer, and a board of wood, what you get is um, instruction, an instruction manual with the hammer, some precaution um, notes with the nail, and maybe some characteristic sheet with a piece of wood. However, there's no information contained in these documents how to convert these three things into a chair. So you need to take a third piece or a fourth piece of paper and write down how you take the nail, use the hammer on the board to turn it into a chair. And that piece of paper, and I think we're all agreeing here, is best stored in a media wiki. Secondly, it's a fantastic rapid prototyping platform. Uh, there's a very good talk by Marcus Glazer uh, two years ago in Frankfurt. Um, before, for example, we turned to Clubhouse for a you know, fully fledged, comprehensive uh, team software management platform. Uh, you might want to start with a very simple semantic model, modeling the main use cases and get people uh, familiar with what they should do. And then they can start to uh, evaluate specialized uh, um, software for that purpose. And it's an integrating cookbook. Uh, that's what I meant before with the nail and the hammer and the board. You have recipes in a cookbook, and we all love that. For example, you know DigitalOcean, uh, you know the, this host. Uh, I think they have the best knowledge article ever, uh, really. You know, without any knowledge about Apache configuration, any beforehand knowledge, you're, you're able to enable SSL and execute Let's Encrypt and whatever. It's just it's a very concise and good uh, integrating cookbook of recipes. So that's the overview. Now to the implementation. 
this is my search engine and as I said before people while onboarding are put in front of a flip chart and being explained concepts and how they relate. Now what if that explanation process could be executed by a machine instead of by a person who has to sit you down. So what you see here are EPO types and this explains my business. Of course now uh, in the philosophy of eat our own dog food my entire business of course uses this paradigm to be uh, documented. I don't use Confluence to run a company that promotes MediaWiki. But what this now says is that apparently I'm dealing with dashboards that use ontologies. Ontologies can depend on other ontologies. Uh, presentations are carried out uh, by roles. A diagram can be in a context. And a setup can be quality assured by a team. Um, and this will, um, by the way, uh, if you look that up now, it's online. There's a lot of technical debt in here that I have to clean up when I get back because I had to speed up things to make it available for this conference. So um, things look rather nice, but behind the scenes, not everything is working perfectly. For example, if we change the search context to features or support, there will be not a lot of useful things uh, coming up. Uh, this, for example, is an idea that we can switch the search engine into a different mode by specifying the context we're in. Because the general context might not be enough uh, for all user groups. So that's um, explaining the concepts. Now how do we implement that on a wiki? That's my find and learn wiki and this is the terminological view you see regarding the uh, every page is page one um, ontology. So here you see the entity type uh, with the number of instantiations, then direct links to add new, and all of these individual entity types contain two main building blocks, a template and a form. And we're going to have a look at that, how that um, looks like in detail. And then the predicates are actually, I include the has type, which is the semantic media wiki internal typing, uh, but I also introduce something else like, for example, predicate class. I have passive action and active action because I think it is a revealing and very well explaining thing that you can, when you explain a concept to a person and you tell them what you can do with that, that facilitates understanding. You know, if I show you this button and I'm, maybe you don't really conclude what it is for, but if Carl comes up to you and said, well, actually it can show me, you know, you, you, you explain the active and passive action that this thing can carry out or be carried out upon, which adds to the understanding. So that's why I'm, but it's not reflected in the search engine yet, it's just prepared. Um, so in terms of, oh, by the way, here you see the summary then um, of all the entity types that make up my ontology. So you've got uh, the type diagram and then the individual diagrams uh, with all the properties or actually I elevate them to annotations because I don't have properties that don't use subobjects. Why? Because subobjects allow us to reify. This is something that Denny explained very well before and reification is crucial at some point. You need to be able to reify. So that's why um, it's done like that. Then how is this implemented? This is um, the same basis, although slightly um, elaborated since last year on, in Houston. I held this workshop about how to equip an empty media wiki with a basic ontology that serves for general uh, knowledge management. So here you have all the templates, properties, and categories, forms, and main namespace pages that make up that ontology. By the way, as you can see here, this is a GitHub repository. You've got the link there. Uh, so this can be shared. Uh, you can install that on any media wiki, and then it has a presentation. Uh, implementing EPO and SMW, which is from the Houston conference. Now, 
how do we implement one the ent entity type uh, let's say we take the new entity type diagram that involves one main namespace page which is entity type and since the terminological level of our ontology is also of interest I want to be able to annotate the terminology layer as I do the assertional layer. So it's not just instan instances of diagram, but also the, 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 the phenomenon of a diagram itself. Then we've got, of course, the template. And now here you see I abstract as much out of the instance, or let's say the, 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 the diagram template and diagram form uh, so that this is reusable. So the template diagram uses metadata, a metadata um, template where all the semantization is done. So there's nothing here. Uh, what is uh, valid for any entity type is keywords, entity title, entity blurb, and entity type. Uh, and then here you see if I add an annotation, that annotation doesn't go in here, but it uses an annotation template which sets a predicate and sets an object. And you can see now here I can reify. Reification means expressing statements about statements, which solves the binary restriction of a semantic web, where you only have one subject and one object, which is then linked, but you have to, as uh, Denny said, you know, the world is a million times more complex and the only thing to do that is, th is uh, through um, reification. Then, uh, with the form, we use uh, templates for the form header, standard form sections, and form footer. So if you add a property to your entity type, the only thing you have to do is go to template diagram, add this annotation template, and these two table fields, actually, to accommodate the... Um, new annotation. And here we see the rather complex metadata um, template. And most importantly is down here. This is where you set the properties that are valid for all uh, entity types. So that's it. That's uh, how I envisage the pivotal role that Semantic Media Wiki can play among, it's a primus inter pares, uh, among the many other resource silos that we should consider when uh, implementing knowledge management for companies. Thank you. Questions for Lex? So when you show that ontology, um, I'm, I'm missing a, a, a little bit because I haven't implemented ontologies like this. But um, I guess what I'm wondering is what, what's the next step? Well, like, if you have this whole ontology, then how do we get Ellie to uh, externalize her, her knowledge? Well, um, the in instantiation of this ontology is what you see here. Um, you see, I say every piece of knowledge regarding orientation, understanding subject workflows and procedures is of a distinct entity type. Uh, so Ellie will choose when she has a strike of a inspiration, idea, whatever, Fortunately, or let's say ideally, she figures out what it is and chooses the right entity type to um, accommodate that. Talking about that, you see that all my page titles, without an exception, carry the entity type designation in front of it. You know, because actually when you say, when you introduce a person, you say, this is John, but you might also say, this is my friend John, this is my colleague John, this is my brother John. So you're revealing already relational information or the role that that entity assumes in your life 
uh, automatic. So it's a cheat. It, it reads clear. Imagine if this was just XML sitemaps com. That, that your brain will con will will encode this as a URL. But if you say business service sitemaps com, and you are slightly familiar with my domain, you will figure out that well. In order to index websites, you need a sitemap. And of course, he uses the business service XML sitemaps.com to do that. So if Ellie is now charged with the task to find a best way of indexing sitemaps, uh, she will probably come up with that and say, OK, that's a business service. And this is reflected here. Um, here, actually. It's business, that's, by the way, mermaid, that doesn't really work well if it's cramped. But, um, and by the way, you see here we have a list of properties that are pertinent to that um, entity type. And if they are not linking to another entity type, they're just put here in a list. So uh, again, you know, she would, and, and ideally when Annie or Ellie externalize knowledge, they must have a maximum of support about where to put it. So, That's so, a challenge so, that will... Yeah, so I get it. So, so if Ellie is going to put something into the wiki about a business... If, if Ellie is going to put something into the wiki about a business service, then she's already got access to that ontology that the template and the form for business service is already in the wiki. Exactly. So she would just go here. Add new. Add new. And you would have that. Um, and by the way, here you see how I add the annotations. So this is um, making sure that the average end user can extend the ontology, the assertional ontology, by introducing new properties. And it's the search engines, well, my system's task then to actually draw up uh, this a, a terminological ontology. And we're not going to, um, because I didn't sacrifice to the presentation gods, but I tell you, if we added a new uh, property in one of those uh, types, it would show up here immediately. So this should also serve if you have someone who is working in a department uh, and seldomly has to extend uh, his or her actions into a different department, she can quickly look up what, what that business domain is actually looking at. And also, we're going to have different queries and different analyzers, different indexes, depending on the business domain. And this should sort of give you a visual overview about how search queries will be executed within that subdomain of your uh, of your company. Um, <clears throat> how feasible is it to have users modifying the data structure, and does that include you know potentially adding new page types, which have which each have their own new namespace, that sort of? Yes, thing? Um, that uh, is not optimized yet, but we have. So do we get here back? You see under recipes, you're absolutely right. You see add edit subject type uh, is something that has to be made so comfortable and so intuitive and especially what is a concern with all of this is coherence. Because if you, if you stop developing the system, you know, making it robust at 50%, you let that run for two weeks and it will disperse, you know. And then you have this problem of it's not useful anymore because everything is, is spread out. Um, yeah, these are the challenges that we are uh, into now. Uh, until now, I was really concerned with the infrastructure because I want to have that set up. At the, as we discussed with James the other day um, at the strike of a of a button. But yes, this is certainly a challenge that will, next year I think I will hope to come up with a good solution there. I welcome your thoughts about that. Someone else? 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you.